Congratulations, Nitin. Thank you, sir. For securing All India 32 rank in Civil Service Examination 2022. It's a great achievement. And uh, as you could not qualify in pre in the first attempt and then second time in mains. And finally in the third attempt, all the three stages with such brilliant rank. So naturally, it is high appreciation for you. So how are you feeling now? Sir, uh, the very first feeling is of relief that uh, at last I am out of the cycle. And uh, after that, we are very grateful that I could achieve this rank. And uh, whatever hard work that I had put in, it paid off in the end. So, there is grateful towards that. See, you the answer which you gave feeling relieved. It was a very expected answer from you. So, I would like you to comment on this word relief. When a candidate succeeds, so how and what kind of relief is this? Sir, uh, when we are in the cycle, when we are in the preparatory mode, so there is an uncertainty about our yes, future, yes. whether we will we'll reach there or not. I would say that uh, one is always confident and convicted to his uh, ambition or objective, whatever it is. But still, we cannot uh, ignore the uncertainty that this exam has. And uh, despite of uh, being very talented and all, uh, still you can never be sure. So once you get into the list, you are relieved that at least we have made up to this point, And uh, this is where we start. See, although every second day or next time which comes in our own life is full of mystery what is going to happen there and that's the beauty of nature also this life that we keep following that mystery and to unfold that in life but when it comes to civil service examination right there is one very very common question in the mind of most of these parents how to remain motivated for such a long time because it's a long journey of three consecutive years of your attempts, right? So, to help the future aspirants, I would like to you to answer the question from your experience, okay, how you remain motivated and how you kept unfolding this mystery which came in your life. Sir, uh, in fact, I had one quote which I made myself and I wrote it down. It was that uh, motivation doesn't lead to action, it is the other way around. You're right. To stay motivated, in fact, you have to work. And uh, whenever you achieve small targets, daily targets, it fills you with uh, enough confidence that yes, I am on right path and I am in right direction and that further motivates you to work even more. Apart from that, it should be very intrinsic motivation and uh, whatever reasons I have to appear in this exam should be very clear to me and uh, in fact, I had been very philosophical uh, throughout my life till now. So, I had made it a point that whenever I do certain action or certain objective I, that I need to fulfill, I must be very clear philosophically on that. Why do I need to do that and uh, what is it that I will gain from that? So, such questions must be clear. You have used two very beautiful concepts. You know, one you said that there is a journey, the direction which you take and keep you evaluating where you are going is important. So, it is beautifully said that right direction taken is more important than the destination reached. Yes. Because if you have taken the right direction, then you are sure to reach the destination maybe today or tomorrow, but you will be there, right? The second thing which you said is that intrinsic motivation. Candle lighted from the outside will not continue for long, but there is a candle within. Definitely it is going to last for long, right? So, you are talking about the, your real motivation inspiration and the third important thing you added there, why you are why taking this pain? Why you are taking the If you do are not clear about your reasons of why you are taking the efforts and the pain, you stop somewhere anywhere. It will be very interesting for the audience to know about your background, what is your family background and educational backgrounds. Please say something about that. We have a family of four, uh, the immediate family of four. Uh, I have an elder sibling, uh, she is my elder sister. Then uh, my father and my mother, mother is homemaker and father is a teacher and uh, it has been a middle class background and uh, we had seen uh, economic uh, hardships as well at some point of time and that I feel uh, every Indian middle class must have felt and uh, apart from that my grandfather he was a farmer and he was not very big farmer. Uh, in fact, I had seen my parents the kind of hardships that they had. Uh, faced 
तो इट मोटिवेट्स अस फर्दर एंड दैट इज़ वन ऑफ द की पिलर्स ऑफ मोटिवेशन दैट कीप्स यू पुशिंग दैट यू हैव कम फ्रॉम समवेयर एंड यू नीड टू गो समवेयर एंड दैट्स द काइंड ऑफ बैकग्राउंड दैट आई हैव सही दिते इन इट इज़ अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग कॉन्सेप्ट इन मोटिवेशन यू टॉकिंग अबाउट मोस्ट ऑफ द पीपल हु कम इन द अनप्रिवलेज फैमिली यू नो एंड मिडिल क्लास दे टेक इट एट डिसएडवेंटेज कि सिंस आई डोंट हैव बैकग्राउंड वी आर फेसिंग इकोनॉमिक प्रॉब्लम इन द फैमिली माई ग्रैंड फादर वॉज अ फार्मर माई फादर इज जस्ट ए टीचर यू नो दिस इज लुकिंग हाउ डू यू लुक इन लाइफ वॉट यू आर टॉकिंग इज दीज ऑल थिंग्स बिकेम ड्राइविंग फोर्स फॉर यू राइट सो द पीपल हु हैव सिमिलर बैकग्राउंड लाइक यू वॉट मैसेज यू लाइक टू गिव टू देम वाई दे शुड नॉट कीप इट इन डिसएडवेंटेज बट दे शुड टेक देयर this kind of background for advantage please say something about that in fact sir um, it brings value to that background as well and it it validates that background is sufficient and that uh, potent enough to generate success right and uh, which is validated when you reach a certain uh, whatever success one might aspire for and um, any hardship you face it is a challenge that uh, we must take and um, any hardship makes a man a better person after it passes yes yes in that way this is always uh, motivational for a person that it doesn't matter from where i come but uh, it is what that wherever i will reach it is that i decide that is very very powerful thing again once you are saying concept is that you know this is such an exam and the service that you get after this in the smallest possible time this is the fastest journey you can get in your life to reach from very humble background and like a student to immediately to become someone special in the society like civil servant immediately the whole life transforms ki how it you are going there so any amount of effort if you are taking sincerely it's not a waste yes in the whole process what you become is more important than what you achieve so now it is a complete transformation you are talking and the kind of uh, immediate achievement you have got definitely it is a big achievement in fact sir it is one of uh, the things that napoleon used to say and we have studied world history so we are very inspired of uh, the statements that he had made that whenever a person faces any problem or a challenge after that challenge passes away that person is a better and uh, improved person. better evolved person yes. in that way any challenge must be taken head on and um, this exam tells us that uh, we need to work consistently towards our in fact if you have no challenge in life you will not grow you will stagnate so you should be always able to take challenges and face the struggle a kind of opportunity in the adversity that should be the spirit of facing everything there talking a bit about your educational background as i'm aware about you with your discussion you are uh, engineer from iit roper yes sir and uh, you also are from the computer and the yes the computer science so computer science engineering which also has a big market today and big opportunity yes to get in terms of money in terms of life so just living that how this idea of coming into is came in your mind sir um, the idea was already there even before joining or even thinking for iit i had decided that i will be joining civil services as a living uh, this is something that i should do and uh, as a person who contributes to the society the iit in fact was a way to get to uh, there so it was uh, a graduation option for me and uh, the love for sciences and uh, kind of exposure that one gets there so it has been very contributing towards personality development towards awareness about technology so it has helped a lot and uh, the idea was already there it means that selection of career choice was already there yes sir. from the very early days and uh, what all you wanted that you wanted to be technically graduate yes. means some qualification which is needed for appearing in examination and you had love for science reading and other thing that's where wonderful clarity there now if you look back when the idea came first to go in civil service what will you say i think sir in 7th or 8th standard uh, i had come to know that there are ias and uh, it's very interesting that so early you came to know yes sir but uh, clarity was not that much there but still it was uh, a blurred picture that it is a very good job opportunity and a very good employment uh, but uh, the bigger philosophical clarity that i gained during college at that time i had um, complete conviction that this is going to be the career option for me nitin uh, it is 
old saying, well begun is half done. So when I ask you to comment on this, how does it apply on you? Sir, it is very well said and uh, it is very true. And um, the very part of any action is the conviction that you carry in the beginning uh, for its completion. And uh, that is all about how we begin, how uh, sincere we are in the beginning and the initial foundation steps. So I must say that it is very true. How does it apply to you? Sir, um, I had cleared this exam in my third attempt. And uh, I know that the most of uh, learning and the most of uh, uh, the study that I had to do, it was in the first year only. And I had done with utmost sincerity in that year. And I had put a lot of effort in the first year. So I know that it was the first year which is the foundation of all the... So even though you missed in the pre the first year. Yes. But because of this sincere preparation. Yes, yes. You were confident that I'll get it. In fact, sir, first year also I missed prelims by uh, three marks. Right. And that was due to lack of uh, practice. I didn't practice much uh, on mock tests. So that was the learning that I took for the next year. But uh, a lot of syllabus and knowledge was being gathered in the first year only. But when it came to the second attempt, you reached up to the mains. Yes, sir. Was there any kind of short-term or long-term demotivation that came to you that I came to this stage and again I have... In fact, sir, um, I didn't clear mains in second. And the main reason was that uh, too much focus on prelims after I had failed in the first year. So I was very much focused on prelims and a lot of um, effort was being... Uh, put towards mock tests and uh, learning facts and figures. But mains is very different from prelims and it requires different orientation. And uh, that was something which I missed uh, in my second year. And I do realized, and in fact, that was again the learning from the second year and I implied that part in the third year. Now, if I ask you to comment on the whole uh, correction from first, to second to third yes, sir. attempt. So what did you correct in the second attempt? Yes. And what did you correct in the third attempt. Sir, in second attempt, I attempted more mock tests for prelims and um, I was uh, much focused on attempting the paper in the examination hall. So prelims is not just learning and knowing things. You must be able to perform on the day of the exam. And that is what you learn by giving mock tests. And uh, that too, as per the all rules and uh, timings, and you also fill the OMR sheets. You're right. This also needs practice. Sometimes to do the mistake of not filling yes. it properly also. Yes. Yes. And uh, in the second attempt, I realized that one must focus on answer writing and addressing the demand of the question. It is not what you know that they want to know. They want to know what is being asked and you must address that. And uh, that is something uh, which I learned and uh, applied in the third year. Okay, so that you kept correcting, you know, yes. failures are pillars of success. You applied it very nicely. One thing I would say is one's uh, preparation in this journey must be very dynamic and we must be very uh, focused on what is not working and what should work and change it very uh, like immediately as soon as it fails. As there are three stages of the examination yes. and uh, pre has become really challenging especially this year it has been a lot of discussions and debate going on ke there is a drastic change in the primary's orientation. When the exam is over, a pre, yes. discussion comes that this trend has changed. Again, it has happened. So, in my experience of nearly 30 years while running China Cash Academy, I find that it's not a new kind of thing. Yes. Still, you have to say anything about this particular pattern of this year? Sir, what they have done is they have uh, kind of options they are giving. They are trying to limit uh, the elimination method that candidates have been using. In fact, it's hats off to UPSC. They have always been ahead of coaching industry and yes. all mock tests, whatever predictions that people make, they have been able to defy those predictions. And uh, this year also they have done that. And last year also uh, was the first year when they introduced such kind of options in which elimination techniques could not be used much. Uh, then also it was said that it is very uh, difficult Again, this year. Difficult, right? yeah. So I think uh, this is a trend that we can expect the next year as well. This is what I said in the beginning. I am saying it for more than 30 years. The same kind of discussion comes every year that there is a change in the trend. So in this situation with your experience, as you have appeared three times in the pre, yes. right? what you would like to suggest to the students, what kind of mindset they should have for appearing in this exam? Sir, prelims is a lot about um, width of knowledge that one knows. And uh, they have been very extensive in fields that they cover. 
uh, like in uh, SNT they are covering black holes and the latest developments in uh, space telescopes. So uh, one must be aware of that and uh, the approach for that is we should be very strong in static portion but we should be aware about current in a holistic manner. Like if I know that uh, India is evolving very much in space industry then I should know that at what level world is working. So such kind of um, analytical viewpoint towards world they are expecting in prelims as well. I would say extensive reading but staying within the bounds of syllabus and revising your static uh, portion. Especially this year, there has been also questions coming from the mains syllabus. Like yes. they touched international relations, they have taken internet security. Even in polity also they are going in depth and asking certain intricacies of uh, like the president's election also. So there was one question on that. So it shows that uh, they are demanding now depth uh, in that wide. So in a way there should be integrated approach. Yes. Both analytical and also factual. Yes. Sir. As combined for both pre and mains. That should be always there. And the students cannot go with superficial study. Yes. And I would also like to advise that don't depend on just notes. Read through the original sources and original In fact, sources. sir, I would say notes are always a secondary material. Yes. It is not notes in themselves. It is the process of notes making. Yes, that what, will help me better. Yeah, that what makes them useful. And one must make his or her own notes and then they are very useful for revision. Going directly for notes is not going to help. This is something very important to understand for the future aspirants that uh, note making is an art. Yes. And that should come at your own. Yes. You innovate your technique, how you are going to read, yes. study and then note down the points which you can recall later on revise in very less possible time. That is very, very important. Yes, sir. But if you are reading through the notes compiled by somebody else, then you are not giving enough exercise to your mind. And That is very inorganic way of yes. learning. Uh, and that uh, you will not be able to really digest it, rather you can cram it, but that will not become yours. So make your own notes, that is something. Note making is an art, I said. So I would like to listen from you especially and on behalf of the students, how to make notes. Sir, I have done extensively for history. Being um, an engineer, we don't have uh, much idea of history. Um, but uh, when we are introduced to this syllabus, we find it very tough and uh, large, lengthy to, uh, to learn. Uh, but uh, the main technique that I used was I went with the standard book and I read Bipin Chandra for modern and old NCRT is for ancient and medieval. For that I followed the pattern of the chapters, the kind of uh, the way in which they had written. They are the historians and they must have placed it in a logical sequence. So I have relied on that and following that chronology then add uh, small snippets and small notes into that chronology. It helps in uh, understanding those notes. And it um, brings a chronological sequence of history in our mind. In fact, I had not uh, read much factual study beyond these books, but uh, I was able to solve many questions just on the basis of chronology. So notes can be uh, based on that logical sequence and we can use that very much. And apart from that, mind map is one thing that is very useful in uh, note making. Uh, we can uh, construct certain diagrams and make parts as its sub-dimensions. So it helps in remembering them uh, when whenever we feel like… Uh, uh, revision, you yes. should always be preparing something which you can quickly revise. Yes, yes. Sir. And revision is hallmark to the success, right? That is very important. Now talking about the main examination, if I ask you to define broadly for the students how to attempt and how to really prepare for the main examination, what would you like to say? Uh, sir, for mains, one must have very good base in static and one must be aware of the current developments. It requires one or one and a half year of newspaper reading prior to the mains exam. One must have done that thoroughly. After that, when we sit for mains, we must address the demand of the question. Right. And uh, we must address each sub part of the question. And it is very crucial. And um, in fact, uh, if we write answers which are not linked to the question, they are not logical answers and it might irritate the examiner as well. It shows that we are trying to answer just for the sake of writing or filling the page. This can be learnt during um, answer writing practices before mains. And this is the best uh, investment one can do for mains. We cannot go for uh, more and more uh, reading or more and more learning 
we must consolidate our uh, current knowledge and able to project that knowledge in a structured manner in mains that is what i feel is most important talking about civil services personality test interview right what do you think are the traits needed to do well in this kind of test sir um, for interview i felt was uh, a person who is genuine and who is confident in being genuine and this is the most important thing that they are looking for and uh, Uh, one must be able to accept any shortcomings whatever they are and there must be a willingness to uh, improve on to them and it must show in one's character and one's uh, way of talking and um, they really appreciate genuineness in interviews and um, apart from that what i have felt was a diverse personality which is pleasant to communicate with they do appreciate that since you have got very good marks in the interview civil services final interview 195 so naturally your tips will play a very important role for others to do would you like to share a bit of uh, your start and also some special moments in the your interview with the upsc in fact sir i would say it was a life changing experience for me uh, one thing i would say is sir uh, the positivity in mind is something which we can train and it doesn't necessarily depend on our surroundings or outside factors and it should not in fact and uh, it was uh, something i felt during my interview uh, while we were waiting in the uh, sitting hall waiting hall uh, there is one poem by rabindranath tagore which is written over there and it is uh, the poem that uh, the where the head is held high and the knowledge flows freely so that the entire poem that rabindranath tagore has written right hmm. i read that poem during that uh, while i was sitting there so it filled me with positivity that um, we as civil servants will be working in that direction the kind of india that he had hoped to achieve and uh, we are kind of representatives for that so uh, this was the positive training that i had been giving uh, myself on the day of the interview and that uh, correlated what you read from the lines of rabindranath tagore ji yes <laughs> and when i entered the interview hall so my boat was uh, rn chobe sir uh, he was our chairman and uh, he began with uh, that uh, the scientific background that i had and he went on to say that uh, our constitution also has this uh, duty that one must uh, develop scientific temper so what do you actually understand by scientific temper uh, in fact my pet thing and uh, i had thought on this topic a lot that was very good start for me in the interview and i could reasonably satisfy him with my answer so which i think that went well for me so it uh, all started very well there yes. any any critical moment when you felt that you stuck and you were not able to sir there was one uh, moment uh, one of the board members he asked me what is the speed of earth at that moment i was confused whether he is talking about the revolution speed or the rotating speed so that was the only moment apart from that it went very fine and even that i was able to justify that uh, i got uh, genuinely confused so it was more on the factual side uh, sir it was uh, more on philosophical side right especially uh, chairman sir your questions were more on the philosophical yes side. but i'm talking about when the factual question came uh, the problem it was on the you maintain your poise at this point of yes. time right now see uh, time management is a very big factor in this examination so i'd like you to share your time table how you manage your time in the preparation so since um, i was into preparation full time and uh, i was not doing any job at that moment so i was able to give uh, a lot of time to the preparation uh, but still uh, one must uh, manage one's time very wisely because uh, we cannot study entire day and it ultimately reduces our efficiency so we must find some time in the evening or early in the morning uh, to take a walk or a small run it helps and uh, apart from that one must uh, not indulge in uh, non fruitful discussions yes which i think is very prevalent in our preparation among the people the civil service parents it has yes. become common yes you gossiping and talking something which is not productive yes. in fact um, uh, this was one thing which uh, one of my teachers told me that it doesn't matter what i think or what other person thinks what matters is what is and what uh, um uh, is already established by the institutions of the country so we must go by that 
and uh, any other critical thinking we are free to explore that in our essay paper but not in other uh, syllabus yeah so we must avoid that. that is the place essay where you have uh, yeah we have freedom for our own thoughts and yeah. own views now uh, nitin just to give a few points like just to which you would like to give like guidelines three or five points to the future aspirants from your experience what do you like to suggest them the first guideline is uh, one must be fully prepared in static uh, portion of their syllabus and uh, revise it uh, as many times as possible and then next i would say is um, read newspapers newspaper any good newspaper hindu and indian express they are the most prominent ones and uh, one newspaper is more than sufficient and give it a thorough read there is no need to make notes out of newspaper one can always have compilation of uh, these notes uh, as yearly or uh, half yearly compilations we have in market uh, but uh, a thorough reading is a must yeah right. uh, then third i would say practice mock tests and uh, um, make sure that you are prepared on the day of the exam and uh, then uh, same goes for answer writing for mains that would be fourth and uh, fifth i would say is on the day of the exam for prelims as well as for the mains be calm and composed and don't revise on that day just stay calm and be uh, should, happy you should have uh, good sleep at the night. yes take rest there should be restful mind you know and you should and while you enter the examination hall you should have confidence and faith in your preparation and go with that i'm sure your uh, sharing of your experiences and your suggestions to the future aspirants will be really really good for them and they will be able to relate with you those especially come from a background like yours so thank you very much for coming to this program success speaks thank you god bless you right thank you sir thank you don't forget to like share and subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update